We're at the Effingham Public Library. We thought you might want to look around if you haven't had a chance to come by. Here's your opportunity and our tour guide is Library Director Amanda McKay. Thanks for having us over, Amanda. Thanks. We get the chance to take a look at everything going on here. What's been the biggest benefit of the new facility More today? More space. <laughs> More space and more parking. Yeah. That's been great too. Yeah, people so. don't have to hunt for parking. They space don't, now. and it's amazing. Like we've had we've had a lot of new visitors and I think it's because there's more space and there's somewhere to park. So Very good. And we're gonna take a look around. Amanda's going to lead the way. We had the opportunity to look at the circulation area. This is where eventually most everybody who visits the library will reach. And Amanda, give us an idea about what all does go on here. Sure, so at Circulation, you can do a lot of things. You can check out items, renew your library card, get a new library card. Mm -hmm. um, we do have self-checkout stations. Um, so that's a really great feature. People can grab what they need and check out um, and then just walk out the door and yeah. What's involved in the process of getting a library card if you don't have one? Sure, if you don't have one, um, so we're city funded, um, city tax funded, which means that if you live within the city limits, you've already prepaid for your card. Um, so all you have to do is come in and show a picture ID um, and then something with their current address and we give you a card. Um, if you live outside of our city limits, um, then you haven't prepaid. Mm -hmm. um, and so this year it's $128 per family per year. Um, so that's an average of what in-town residents pay on their taxes. Um, and then same process, uh, show us a picture ID and something with your address on it. So, and you can get cards for the kids or um, you can have a family card or however you'd like to do it. This too looks like you have a lot more space and a lot more flexibility at this location. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot more space to spread out. Um, when people are checking out, there's a little bit more privacy now. It's not people on top of you, and um, so it's really great. And for your personnel, yes. for your staff members, they have a lot more room to work. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really lovely. Um, you know, we can spread out and do projects, and um, things are a lot more organized now. So it's great. We're in the cafe at the library. Now, what all goes on here? A lot of relaxation. <laughs> I'm for that. So we've got a lot of great seating areas. Um, the newspapers and magazines are in here. And it's just a great place. And of course, the coffee. There you are. Um, and it's just a great place to hang out for a short time. Or, you know, you could spend half the day, all day in here just relaxing and um, conversing with people. And um, just really nice. Nice space to gather. So people have that 20 minutes or 35 minutes or a couple hours and they don't know what to do with it. We should come in here. You provided the answer. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All the latest issues of the magazines and uh, newspapers are right here. So We called it the cafe. If somebody has their sandwich with them, is that cool or is that... It's absolutely cool. Yep. Yep. Actually, food and drink is allowed anywhere in the library except at the computers. So. We don't want those to get all smudgy. <laughs> so now you know what to do for lunch. That's right, just come on down. We're in the media area at the library. I guess we should define media. Yeah, so that means um, audiovisual, like DVDs, um, audiobooks, Blu-rays, games. Um, so we have games for gaming systems here in this section. So you get pretty much anything you need. Not just books and not just newspapers. That's right, that's yeah. right. All kinds of things. This is still a work in progress, this area here, right? It is, yeah. So we're still waiting for a few pieces of furniture um, to display the, um, the media. So we also have CDs as well, music CDs. Um, so we're waiting for a few pieces of furniture. That'll come in the probably the second week of October. So it'll be nice. You'll keep seeing new stuff up here. Nothing wrong with that. That's right. You'll have to keep coming back. That's right. We had the opportunity to talk to Amanda about some of the sections so people would get some perspective on why things are grouped where they are and we're in front of some of the most popular selections I think that's safe to say we are yeah so we're on the first floor in front of the fiction section um, so the fiction is organized by the author's last name we also do something here called genre shelving um, so that means that um, we've picked the three for our community most popular genres which are Christian fiction mysteries and western and so we've pulled those out and i can show you uh, so this is a christian 
uh, fiction, um, and so it has the Christian sticker, and so anything with that sticker is grouped in the same spot by alphabetical by last name. So if that's what you like, you can go find that right away. Amanda, talk about where we are now. We are on the first floor and we're in our computer lab. And so what this space is for um, is not for public computing, but rather for classes that we run for the community. So we hire an instructor and they come in and teach various courses, um, sometimes as basic as this is a computer and this is how it works, or this is a tablet and this is how it works, um, all the way up to access, Photoshop, um, you know, different types of programs like that, so, and everything in between. I like it that it ranges from beginners to advanced because my mom is a good example. My mom is older than me, you would have guessed that. <laughs> and she has learned now how to navigate the internet and get involved in different things. It's wonderful for her to have a place like this where if she wants to learn more, here's the opportunity. Exactly, and we try to listen to our patrons and see what they're interested in and what's, you know, for a while we were doing stuff on files and folders, mm -hmm. um, but now that most people have moved to tablets, like we don't really do that class anymore because it's just not, it's just not what people need. So, so we switch, we switch courses, so. So if people have an idea about, hey Amanda, I wonder if we could, then that's the sort of thing you want Pretty to hear. Pretty much, yeah, absolutely. They can tell me, they can tell any staff member and we'll get it to the right person. One of the ingredients of the Effingham Public Library is the historical and genealogical area and Effingham County Historical Society and Genealogical Society have been a part of the Effingham Library for decades and it was nice to my editorial way of thinking, Amanda, that they are still a big part of the new facility. Yeah, we're really happy that, that they decided to stay with us. Um, so we have this beautiful space for them um, and all of their collection. Uh, the old space, they had a small corner and then um, some storage in the basement, but because it was in the basement, that meant that our patrons couldn't, and their patrons couldn't really get to it. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, the volunteers are here, um, we're here and we're there uh, to get the items, but. You know, it's really, it's so great to have all of the stuff, all of the historical items here in one room, in one space. Um, and the volunteers are just fabulous. And anytime you need help with that, they're, they're the go-to. Well, you think about Effingham County's been a county for almost 200 years. We're getting to that point where it'll be 200 years. And the city's been around 150 some years. So there's a lot of history that can accumulate about our immediate area in a short period of time. There is. Um, so we have microfilm of uh, the papers um, of record. Uh, they've collected family files of different family names, yearbooks, um, other print publications that relate to our area. And of course, they write their own books too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so about the history of our community. So, so that's really great too. We've talked about the fact the library and the patrons really wanted to keep the library downtown. That when the survey was conducted, the majority of people said, yeah, let's keep it downtown, even make it more downtown than it was over on market. And here came this facility open. I'm thinking about the County Cultural Society Museum Association, which is in the old courthouse just across the street. Mm -hmm. So if you want something from here, you can come here. If you want something from there, you can go over there. It's all handy. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great partnership. It's a great, it's great location wise. Um, so yeah, it really works out very nicely. We're in the vault, the upstairs vault, the main floor vault here at the Effingham Public Library. A little tough to get rid of a vault, right? It is, and it's actually holding up half of our building, I like to say, so uh, we very much love the vault. <laughs> <laughs> Structurally sound because of the vault. It is. And you filled it with beautiful things, Amanda. We did, so it is a vault. Um, it has uh, very thick um, and reinforced walls, so demolition is not really an option. Um, so. And you can't really expand a vault once it's made. Um, so what we did was we turned it into a gallery space for local artists. Um, so right now we have John Gabb um, and his artwork is displayed in here now. Um, and then next month it'll be someone new. So, and of course we always have ARC and the Turbo Arts um, program comes down in the fall, the late fall too. So, so this is where you'll find that stuff. Right now it's the work of John Gabb and he of course uh, has done a lot of work related to Corvette as we're recording this. It's the week after the Corvette Fun Fest in Effingham so 
hence the automotive theme. We thought it would be a nice tie. <laughs> And we did have a lot of guests come over from the Corvette um, when the Corvettes were downtown, and uh, did take a take a look through it. So it was a nice it was a nice draw. Another reason to come back on a regular basis and see what's on display. You never know. There you are. <laughs> We've made it to the second floor at Effingham Public Library. We're in the teen section, and Amanda, bright colors, funky furniture funky fun chairs just like a <laughs> young person might like exactly yeah so so this space is meant for our teens um, it's enclosed in glass uh, so they have some privacy you know when they come here after school they can you know hang out they can work on homework um, we've got this table back here which is for you know small group work or solo work um, we've got other tables out there that are meant for larger groups mm -hmm. and Basically everything in the teen department is movable as far as furniture. Um, and then of course their collection is in here too. So we have nonfiction items for them, um, a lot of fiction and a lot of manga and a lot of graphic novels because those are very popular. They certainly are, they certainly are. Now as far as interactive capability, where are we here? As far as the teen section, because I mean they're all about being online. And yeah, online. so we do have uh, wireless access throughout the building. Um, so anytime they bring in their wireless devices, um, handheld or laptops, um, they can they can connect to our our network and and be online. You have guidelines about what people can view, and mm -hmm. uh, that ought to be reassuring for people. How does that work? Yes. Um, so. Basically, anytime you bring a device in um, or use one of our devices, you're agreeing by to follow our rules, um, which includes you know doing nothing illegal and that type of thing, um, and also not looking at objectionable material. Um, and so, one of the ways that we monitor that is we do walk around um, and kind of look over people's shoulders, um, you know, and. And if something is objectionable, um, or if a patron, another patron comes up to us and says, hey, something, something's going on, uh, we go over to the patron and address it. So. I, I know you even talked about this when you reworked the guide, the bylaws, what, mm -hmm. just in, within the last six months, I know you had this discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, so we did update our internet policy. Um, really, we, we didn't change the substance of it, though. That's still, that system is very much working for us. Uh, so we just updated things like um, we got rid of the word like floppy disk and mm -hmm. some out of date. Not technology. too many of those anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not in use anyway. Yeah, it, it's a fun area. I, I'm guessing that having it on the second floor, the upper floor, the away from everybody else floor, also is appealing to young people. Yeah, I think so. Um, it definitely, you know, gives them kind of a sense of ownership yeah. and a sense of place too. Whereas at the old building. You know, they were right on top of the adults, and um, and they still came and saw us, but uh, we definitely have a lot more teens and preteens visiting us now, So, and we're happy about that. That was the plan. That was the plan. Okay. We're on the second floor, and we're in this particular area that Amanda wanted us to see because this is her favorite area of the library. Talk a little bit about why. It is. Well, because the view is spectacular <laughs> um, and it's just a nice cozy little area. We've mm -hmm. got casual seating all over um, back here. So it's a great place to just relax, um, get together with some friends, uh, talk about books or talk about whatever, uh, bring your drink up from the cafe and just kind of hang out. And yeah. It's just really lovely. It is. And you get such a good view of downtown. We had talked about in an earlier video at the time the process of the renovation was going on about how this was so open and airy and you could see so much of downtown and how the library facility complements some of the other buildings downtown. And now you can see that we have the finished product, Yeah, how true that was. Yeah, especially like last weekend uh, during Corvette Fun Fest mm -hmm. and I mean I came up here and just kind of watched all the Corvettes run in and the Heart Theater had their lights on so it was just really nice and um, just kind of a great tie into the community so it was so, if fun. You, so if you come in for something if you come in for a title or whatever make sure you make your way up here to the second floor and enjoy Amanda's favorite space we're in the yeah. children's department up on the second floor at Effingham Public Library and I said up on the second floor and down on the second floor and let me just cut in here quickly one other benefit of this building besides the size is the accessibility for everybody. Yes, yeah, so we do have multiple floors and we have a lovely elevator um, and now and 
Or Even the help. doors are easier to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, accessibility here is much better. Mm -hmm. We have some examples behind us of how this area can be utilized by children. <laughs> and uh, I'm guessing along with everything else, you took some time to find out from kids or parents of kids, hey, this would be cool if we had this included. Yeah, yeah, there were definitely some fan favorites that had to come over, um, like our dollhouse and our Lego table. Like, we definitely couldn't leave the Lego table behind. Um, and then we added in some new things, um, some new toys, um, some new manipulatives for the kids, and um, just trying to, you know, see what they like and, and keep them learning. So we'll know if something doesn't get used, and we'll know if something gets used a lot. Yes. You know. Yeah. So far, everything has gotten used a lot. I think every because it's all new and fun, and um, so kids have spent a lot of time exploring and having a good time. Good time for us to talk about hours. Mm -hmm. When can we come see you at Effingham Public Library? Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday, 9 a.m. to 6, and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 5. And we're closed on Sundays. We're in the lower level of the Effingham Public Library building, and wanted to give people an opportunity to see the meeting rooms that are down here and people were familiar with the Montreal reading room at the former location and it was a fine little room mm -hmm. but it was a little room and you have a lot more room now. We do. So we still um, we still wanted to honor the Luttrell family yeah. and all of their contributions to the library. Uh, so we are in the Luttrell meeting room, um, which is a little bit smaller than the old Luttrell meeting room. Um, this room holds about 20 to 25, depending on how the room's set up. Um, and then we have our larger room, which is the workman room, which holds about 160, 170. Um, and so both of those rooms are available for rental, hourly rental. The electoral room is $25 an hour, and then the workman room is $50 an hour. So, and people can use those after hours as well, and then we can work that out. So. Yeah, access to the basement, the lower level, through the elevator system. Mm -hmm. That way if the library is closed, you can still have a meeting. Exactly, exactly. And then the rest of the library is blocked off. So. Yeah. There are still opportunities to contribute toward the expanding project of the Effingham Public Library, and we are in the front of the donor wall. Amanda, talk about this. That's right. So this is a great space. Um, so if people are like, well, I want to give, but and I want some, I'd like some recognition for that too, but I don't have enough money to donate to name a space. Uh, we do have our donor wall, um, and that's available at pretty much any level. Um, your name would go, if you wish, your name could go mm -hmm. onto the donor wall. Um, I'm thinking if somebody has, well, like I remember the former mayor that once named a library after his mother. Yes. <laughs> but if somebody has a little less money than that, but somebody that they love or want to remember in a way, there's an opportunity. Absolutely, too. Um, our wall is filled up with um, individuals and family names and then in memorials. Uh, so anything is possible. Contact Amanda at the library. That's right. We've enjoyed our time getting to tour the Effingham Public Library. Thanks to our tour guide, Amanda McKay, the library director. Congratulations on a great facility. Thank you. Thank you. We're really excited to have the public back and be open for business. Absolutely. So come take time to take a tour. I think you'll be very impressed. Even with things we might not have showed you on our video tour, check it out, the Effingham Public Library. I'm Greg Sapp.